Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Today's clip is the first in a series of clips that I've been working on called Phantom 5 Predictions. Now, what I'm hoping to do with this series is to answer as many of the questions as I can that you guys have sent me about what core technologies I think may show up in the new Phantom product from DJI. And there's some people out there that are speculating there may never be a Phantom product. Some people feel like the Mavic was released, the Spark was released, the Inspire's been changed enough that there's no need for a Phantom airframe at this point. I could not disagree more. I really feel like that Phantom product has been a flagship quad for DJI from the beginning, and I'm convinced that there's a team of brilliant engineers that are buried in a lab someplace, some secret lab inside of DJI, that are feverishly working on the changes that'll show up in this Phantom 5 product. And one thing I've learned about this company after flying them for so long and studying them as a corporation, don't underestimate their ability to innovate. I fully believe when this Phantom 5 hits the market, all of us are going to look at it and go, where did they come up with that? How did they come up with that product? So what I thought I'd do with the series, as opposed to creating one large clip where I'd try to jam all these concepts in, in a 45 minute clip, that I'd break it into smaller clips and really take the time to explain why I'm making these predictions and why I'm giving you the speculation about this particular feature or this technology showing up in this particular airframe. Now, some of this is gonna be based on my engineering experience. Some of it will be based on technology that other quads have introduced to the marketplace. But all of these things are suggestions that as a fan of the technology and as an engineer, if I were sitting in one of their production meetings, I would make these suggestions to the company. So I'm not gonna get them all right. I don't have a crystal ball, even though I use that on the thumbnail. These are completely speculation on my part. And again, I have no relationship with DJI. I'm not sitting on those lab meetings. I don't have access to their blueprints or any of that stuff. So it'll be kind of fun to see what happens when this Phantom 5 hits the street and how close I am on some of these predictions. I'm also hoping that these are gonna generate a lot of conversations below in the comments section about your thoughts what's coming with the Phantom 5. So the first clip I'm going to do this one is going to focus on possible release dates for the product and the second part will focus on folding landing gears or retractable landing gears which I think is a key element of what you'll see in the Phantom 5. And again I'll spend a few minutes in each of those concepts but make sure you stop back because I've got other clips in the series that I'll be releasing over the next couple of weeks to fill in some of the gaps on other technologies which I think are critical for the Phantom 5 being released. So anyway stay tuned and I'll get into those two concepts. This first section, I'd like to discuss a possible release date for the Phantom 5 product. Now, before I get into it, what makes this an almost impossible prediction for me is that it's not based on technology. All the other stuff I'm going to talk about is based on innovation in the field and things you're seeing sort of mature at a given pace, and you can make sort of predictions about how that's going to incorporate into a quad down the road. This one, is purely based on when this company decides they're gonna release a product. Now, that's unusual because in the consumer electronics space where these guys compete, normally products are driven by one or two things for when their release cycle takes place. They're either driven by competition, so if they're in a market where there's three or four companies that are all competing for the same consumer spend, they've gotta constantly innovate and one-up the other guy to get that consumer to buy their product. And you see this a lot like in the cell phone market where they're always racing to the new display, the new camera, wireless charging, all kinds of features in that space will drive that release cycle and you'll see them happening at a pace that keeps it competitive between those companies. The other thing that drives a release cycle is fundamental shifts in the technology. Now, in the computer space, there's new chipsets that are coming out, so when a new Intel chipset comes out, everybody races to put out a new laptop that's got that chipset in it, and that's driving what that side of the release schedule looks like. What's interesting about this space is that DJI kind of controls both of those things, right? They're the market leader by far in this space, so they're not really facing a lot of competition or innovation that's driving them to release a product. And I really think behind the scenes, they've got stuff kind of on hold, ready to go if something comes out. You kind of saw that with the Mavic when the GoPro was announced. The second thing is they're a vertically integrated company. And what I mean by that is, unlike a lot of other drone companies out there that buy a lot of components off the shelf, kind of put them in a pretty case and then release it, these guys invent a lot of the stuff they use. So all the way from the controllers down through the batteries and the intelligence that control the batteries are governed by DJI. So there's not a lot of major technological shifts that drive them to release products. Having said that, I wanna talk a little bit about what we might see from a timing perspective. Because if you study the way these things have been released, as I have for a couple of weeks, you'll see a pattern sort of emerging that may help us predict when it's gonna be released. I gotta put my glasses on because I have a schedule up there. So it's for starters, I got a whole lot of Phantom going on here at the table. I got a Phantom 3 Professional, Phantom 4, Phantom 4 Pro. Now, if we start back in the very beginning with the Phantom products, the Phantom 1 came out in January of 2013. I'm still blown away that we're 
not nearly five years into it, we've gone through 12 or 13 different models of Phantom. So that, that pace of change has been phenomenal. And I think early on, DJI raced to that change or raced to that pace of change because they wanted to dominate the market. They really wanted to be out ahead of anybody else in the quad space. So early on, you saw a lot of rapid deployments and a lot of rapid innovation coming through those products. So the Phantom 1 came out in January 2013. Uh, December 2013, about 11 months later, they came out with the Phantom 2 product. So an 11 month cycle from that first gen to the second gen product. Then the Phantom 3 came out in April 15. Now that's about a 16 month delay, but there were a couple of iterations of the Phantom 2. So when they released the Phantom 2 as a platform, they had a couple other models of it that they kind of released four or five months apart. So even though there's 15 months or 16 months between the Phantom 1 and the Phantom 2, or the Phantom 2 and the Phantom 3, um, there were a lot of innovations in that Phantom 2 product. Then the Phantom 3 came out. So I got the Phantom 3 Professional. There were a series of releases of the Phantom 3 as well. So they kind of kept the airframe basic and then made changes to the airframe to sort of exploit additional features or upgrades to the airframe. Then the Phantom 4 came out, this guy. Now the Phantom 4 came out in March of 2016. So between the release of this as the original Phantom and this one, there were 12 months. So you're starting to see a pattern here between major releases, you're seeing about a 12 to 14 month span. Now there've been iterative changes in there. Like I said, the Phantom 3 had a couple of models, Phantom 2 had a couple of models, but the foundational architecture between the Phantom 2, Phantom 3 and Phantom 4 has been about a 12 to 14 month release cycle. Now what screws that up and what a lot of people forget about the Phantom 4 Pro, and I said this when it came out, even though this is a Phantom 4 and this is a Phantom 4 Pro, I felt that the engineering changes between these were fundamental enough that this should have been called a Phantom 5. I would not have been shocked at all if this had been released as a Phantom 5 because of the improvements to the camera, the Lightbridge 2 technology, the innovative remotes they've got out, the controls with the uh, sensing on the outside for crash avoidance. Those were major uplifts that weren't typically an intergenerational improvement. So it wasn't like a Phantom 4 just got a little bit better like the Phantom 3 did. It got a whole lot better with the Phantom 4 Pro. So this should have been a Phantom 5. So when I look at the schedule, I'm thinking 12 months to this guy, about 12 months to this guy. When I look at the Phantom 4 to the Phantom 4 Pro, I get an eight month window. So I got about eight months between these two guys. This was released in November of 2016. The Phantom 5 will not have this airframe because if you look at these two guys, they're pretty close as far as the airframe goes, but they built some innovations into it. I believe the Phantom 5 will have a different architecture, different airframe completely. And I'm predicting about a 12 to 14 month window between the release of this and the Phantom 5. So if I do my math correctly, this came out in uh, November 2016, which means if I go forward 12 months or 13 months, you're right around the December timeframe. So if I was forced to pick it, and again, not just throwing a dart at a calendar someplace, but looking at the pattern of releases, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see a brand new Phantom 5 just in time for Christmas. And what a nice Christmas present that would be. So again, total speculation on my part, but I think scheduling wise, if I look at all the generational releases that have come out with this product, we're about a 12 to 14 month window between them. I know they just came out with the Obsidian model, which will give it a couple of weeks or a couple of months actually on the market before they come out with the next one. Because remember, when that Phantom 5 hits, these guys go away as far as consumer interest goes. So they're gonna keep these guys in the market, well this guy in particular in the market as long as they can to finish out their inventory and all the stuff they bought to build that particular product. I think they're almost at the end of the manufacturing cycle of the Phantom 4 Pro. So that's why I'm saying the Phantom 5, you'll probably see that, I'm gonna say December, January timeframe. And again, I'm taking a, a speculative guess here, but that's my prediction. Sometime in December or January, there'll be an announcement from DJI, one of those secret launch events that I'm hoping I'm invited to, like I have been in the last couple. And if I am, I'll, I'll give you all the details from there. But that's my prediction for release date. The first prediction I'll offer up for the new Phantom 5 involves a major change to the airframe with the inclusion of a retractable landing gear. Now I think DJI is gonna make this change for a number of different reasons, and I'll go through those individually, but I'd like to start with design. If you've studied the way the company has sort of evolved over the last couple generations of product, you'll see they've gone from a traditional kind of a boxy quad down to a much more sleek design with the Mavic. That's more of a horizontal airframe. It's a lot more aerodynamic, just a sexier looking product, and even more so with the Spark. And I think they were a little bit surprised with the consumer appetite for these smaller portable quads. I mean, they're nimble in the air, they're easy to take along with you, they fly like a dream. And if you bought one of these quads and you look back on the Phantom, it looks clunky, it almost looks prehistoric. So I think the consumer acceptance of this means that this is no longer attractive. But the challenge is, it's a bit of a catch-22, the camera systems that are coming out are way more sophisticated. So they've got larger sensors, they've got more sophisticated lensing systems, maybe even a zoom lens on it. You can't really mount those on these platforms because there's not a lot of ground clearance. So you need a platform that's up off the ground to allow you to have that height for the camera underneath. 
but getting the legs out of the way gives you a lot of advantages. So having the platform that'll allow it to support that camera underneath, but the minute it lifts off, having those legs tuck up underneath the body means that I can now have that sophisticated camera spin 360 degrees to get a full rotation, or maybe I'm even mounting a sophisticated 360 degree camera underneath the belly, and I don't want those legs hanging down getting in the shot. So design is one reason. Another reason is aerodynamics. This frame flying through the air with those goofy legs hanging down offers up a lot of wind resistance, which means it's decreasing the efficiency of the quad. We're burning a lot of the electrons in the motors just to drive that through the air. These guys being more of a horizontal platform are way more aerodynamic, and I'm sure they've got wizards that are aerodynamic engineers working for DJI. They want to get as flat as possible. Having those legs hang down is not a good thing. So folding them up against the frame might actually give you more flight time. And we all know that the king of the hill argument is gonna be 25 minutes versus 26 minutes. So folding those arms up might give me an extra minute or two out of the same battery system that's in there. So that's the second reason. I think the third reason is the evolution has taken place in the competition. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of where this is being done already. Now, to start with, DJI actually pioneered this with the Inspire 1. So the Inspire 1, had feet that came down to support the camera. The minute you lift it off, those feet would spin up and you'd fly with it up. And that was released back in 2014. Now, if I look at some of the competition out there, you've got the Unique Typhoon H. The Unique product came out in 2016. Same kind of thing. Okay, it's a hexacopter, but it's got the feet sticking down. The minute it takes off, feet go up and you've got that beautiful aerodynamic form up there. Then you look at the Walkera, the new Voyager 4 that came out, that just came out this summer, 2017. They've got the same setup where they've got feet down. The minute it's up in the air, the feet pull up, and it's a much more aerodynamic package. It also gives both of those quads the ability, including this Inspire, to spin that camera 360 degrees. Now, going forward, I've looked at a couple of frames that are very similar to this traditional quad frame of the uh, Phantom 4. One company that gave us kind of a sneak peek of what's coming is the Autel product. They released a video last year where they said, we've been working on a lot of new things. And in that video, that big orange drone lifted off the ground and both of those orange legs retracted up towards the body. So if Autel's got it, these guys are definitely working on it. And then the last thing I'll point to, and I'm not sure if this was sort of a Photoshopped video or what, but a couple of years ago, there was a video release talking about the Phantom 5 as if it came from DJI and it showed a drone that had retractable landing gears on it. Now, again, this could have been a complete hoax and just an artist's rendition, but it gave me a little bit of an insight into exactly how you could build a retractable landing gear into a quad like this without taking a lot of extra space up. So having those little feet stick down and then pull back up inside the quad really made it a beautiful airframe and gave it a ton of aerodynamics there. So I'm not saying that that's a real quad that they're working on. I don't think that was a leaked video from DJI, but from a design perspective, it gives me a little bit of insight into how they may be able to do it with a fairly similar airframe as this guy. Then the last thing I'll say is that Having those feet pull up, a lot of people will say, well, you need motors to do that. That's another failure point. You're going to use electricity to actually pull those motors up. But I think pulling those motors up takes a little burst of energy out of the batteries. Once they're up and out of the way, the aerodynamics benefits of flying without that wind resistance hanging down more than outweighs it and gives you that flight time back. So I fully believe that they're going to have a retractable landing gear on the Phantom 5 for a number of other reasons that I'm going to get into in later parts of the clip about moving different cameras in and out and all the rest of that stuff. But expect that to happen. That's one I'm betting on. That's all I've got for today, so thanks an awful lot for watching. If you have questions on anything I've talked about or you want to drop some comments below and start a conversation about what you think might be incorporated in the new Phantom 5, I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do that. Hit that button down below, and that way when the next part of this and the part after that comes out, you'll get a notification to know that those have been posted. I get a lot of joy out of putting these things together, and I hope you guys are finding value in them, because if you are, I'll continue to do it. All of this is speculation, right? We're all kind of guessing as to what this product's going to look like, but I really like to take an engineering approach to it and try to do my best guess based on the technology and the evolution of what this platform can provide. So hopefully you're finding this interesting and you're having fun like I am just speculating on what might be coming with this product. But anyway, thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy flying.